We talked about the Nick Chubb contract reworking. Yeah. Two and a half weeks ago, we got news from the NFL owners' meetings that extensions were, quote, very close for Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Berry. This came out on March 25th. It is now April 11th. Where are the extensions at? You know, um, you know, Jason's been screaming about extensions for a while. Yeah, November. Uh, and I'm, I've been with him. Uh, and I'm... Now, in the end, as if they if they sign these extensions this offseason, then no harm, no foul. Right. But frankly, I'm completely baffled how these guys don't have extensions. But let me ask you guys this. Is it possible, and I'll just speak about, I'm not sure, uh, let's just talk from Stefanski's perspective. Um, is it possible it's not the Browns holding it up, but it, he, it, that he's holding it up? Do you think there's a chance that? Because he won more money? Either wants, listen, he's won two Coach of the Year awards. I, I think that's not worth as much as it sounds because it doesn't go to the best coach necessarily. It goes to the best coach of a team that wasn't expected to be good yeah. or had trying circumstances. However, he still has won two coach of the years, which means he's done a, a really good job two years in a row, or not in a row, but two years. Is it possible he's looking for more money? He may be frustrated with ownership and wants to keep his options open. Is there any chance of that? I don't think so. It's a, it's a fair question, but... I think the money's probably agreed on. For Jimmy to come out at the owners' meetings and say it's close, yeah. Typically, at that point, the money, That's fair. the money's, okay. the money's already agreed on. So, so then, what do you think? The I, I don't know. There's when always do- language. There's buyout language. There's, there's all kinds of things that can trip up negotiations or slow things down. It's, uh, I know Dan Gilbert used to put in Cavs coaches' contracts, GM contracts, a stretch clause. If he fired you, he'd stretch your money out over X number of years. Mm. Oh, that's and, nice. And so that type of language, mm-hmm. it's, it's, the, it's the minutia of that. The, the big, obviously the biggest one is the, is the dollars, the annual dollars. For Jimmy to come out of the owner's meetings and say we're close tells me that that part is done. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's that. I think it's the minutia language, the, the, the secondary stuff probably. But, I mean, I, I have no good explanation for why it's not done. Right. I thought it should have been done months ago. Yeah. But I do still believe it, it will get done. They will look like absolute fools if it doesn't oh get done God. at this point. <laughs> so I, I will give them the benefit of the doubt on yeah. this, that it is going to get done. Well, you know when it's going to get When does OTA start? Uh, I, I think in a couple of weeks, right? Is, is it, it the like, first OTA the middle of April? No, no, not practice. Like phase one where you like lift Well, they'll be in April the building. 15th. April 15th. I mean, they'll have a rookie mini camp after the draft. That's when it's going to happen. Right. The rookie mini camp. It's going to happen. Either, Why? Why it, then as opposed to Because everybody in the building again and, you know. But don't, isn't Stefanski in the building every I'm day? I'm sure anyway? he is. But, like, yeah. to, to get the team riled up, like, hey, everybody, this right, is going right, to be right, our okay. coach for the next blah, blah year. Right. I just signed an extension. Everybody yeah. go, hey. Yeah, coach and team meetings. Right. I think that's why. So. Did you guys see – you weren't here when we played this, but um, there was the clip of Deshaun Watson interviewing Kevin Stefanski on his podcast. Yes. Did you see that? I saw a couple of them. And he – where he really, like – Gave him his flowers. Yeah, big time. Yeah. I was – you know, and like – it's easy to say, oh, what's a player going to say? But he didn't have to go – he could have just – I mean, I don't think Kevin Stefanski was expecting Deshaun Watson to like – Praise him over the yeah, top. I, yeah. I don't know. I, it seemed pretty it was, genuine it was, to me. Yeah, it was nice. I, yeah, I, I thought I, it was. Yeah, I, I always thought they had a great relationship. The only time that I ever thought that it was something crazy or wild was the injury that I'm gonna play Sunday, and then Sunday came right, around right. and he went out after the game and said he was medically clear. Yeah, like, that right. was the only time. That whole that, that might have been the only weird. thing in Kevin Stefanski's tenure that I was like, "Whoa, what are you that doing?" That was a weird one. Yeah. Well, I told you, like that whole thing was weird. He was like. It, we don't have to relitigate it, but yeah. that was a strange. <laughs> there was some weird miscommunication in that situation. <laughs> the whole thing was was very strange. But no, I thought it was yeah. good for him to come out and say what he's like. We talked about it I, when they first got him. I wrote the story about how it was Kevin and Deshaun chopping it up over film, basically for right. forty five minutes on yeah. an iPad. It was just the two of them talking ball because no one else could see what was going. It was just it was like me and Ty was with an iPad between us. You right. can't see, they yeah. can't see, and just talking about scheme and fit and what they want to do and, right. and how Kevin envisioned using them and and they really hit it off and and you know for Deshaun to come out and say what he said was felt like a little bit of, of proof of that there's every reason to believe that uh Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski they 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 get along great don't they or no Barry and Stefanski I believe yeah. so yeah 
it, it's always seemed like they have a good relationship. They, they, they see it the respect. Same, yes, it they is, speak the same language. Yeah, they see it the same way. Yeah, they're pulling on the right. rope in the same direction. Which we, which I don't never know if we've had that yeah, here. Yeah. Well, at least uh, since you know, I've been here. You know, but another thing. Yeah, you know how. Well, maybe you don't know, but usually when it's time for players to get paid, mm-hmm. some of the coaches go to bat. Like, I need that guy. Take care okay. of my guy. For example, Debo Samuel, when he was in with the 49ers, right. you know, he, Kyle Shanahan really wanted him to stay. So Kyle was like talking to the upstairs, like, I need this guy. Like, yeah, right. give him his money. I need this guy. Once things got frustrated, Debo did what he did and blah, 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 blah. But in the, ultimately, he ended up getting paid. Same thing can go flipped you know for sure. the players every yeah. since this offseason every player has come out and talked about how great of a coach Kevin Stefanski is from Deshaun Joe uh, when we had DeAnthony Bell everybody has talked yeah. about how incredible of a coach that he is not and it's not just coaching it's the fact that he cares more even Justin Justin Hardy came on on yeah. Tuesday he don't even know him like that but he was just talking about how the coaching staff is right. they care about me as a person he can get I, they gonna get the most out of me because of who they are and how much they care about my mentality and stuff mm-hmm. like that so I think this all season has been for players hey we need to get our guy paid we need to make sure that he stays yeah. here and I think that's what you've been seeing and it's very it, I won't say it's rare but it's special when you got players that's bought into a coach that believe in everything that a coach is doing. Because it's been times where we've been like, he's lost the locker room, even with the Baker stuff, and the right. Odell stuff. He's like, oh, yeah. he don't know what he's doing. But on the outside looking in, that's what it may look like. But on the inside, everybody has so much respect for Kevin Stefanski, and they just yeah. want him to stay. So I right. think this has been one of those operations where all the players is like, we got to do whatever we can to make sure this guy stays and everybody needs to know how special of a coach this guy right. is. And they've been successful at doing that. Now they just need to put the pin to the pad. And I think Stefanski and Barry are hand in hand. Like, you're not going to re-sign one and not the other, I would think. No, you would – You. Sh- I mean, they're on parallel tracks right yeah. now contract-wise. That right. should continue yeah. with and, the extension. And, and what I'll be curious, too, is, you know, not all extensions are the same. Obviously, money is different, but – like, sometimes you see a coach get a two-year extension. You're like, oh, well, they, they, they're they committed to him, but not that committed to yeah. him. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like Kevin Savansky and Andrew Berry, I'm giving them a five-year extension. I mean, why would – what if you're if you're Kevin or A.B., why would yeah. you take less? No, right, absolutely. You got five when you came here. You had to give five <laughs> yeah. because it's been such a tire fire for 20 years right. that you, you had to commit to them for five years to – in order for, I mean, Kevin was in Minnesota for what, 13 years? That's insane. Yeah. So you had to give him stability in order to get him to leave that situation. Right. He's done nothing to earn. How can you sign him for five years when he's done nothing? He wins two Coach of the Year awards. Okay, we'll give you three more. Right. What sense does sense. that make? <laughs> yeah. And you know what's interesting? Well, if the three more got a lot of dollar signs behind it. It is, is going to have a lot of dollar <laughs> oh, yeah. signs. Like, they listen to me hey, in November, hey, they hey, got him hey, at a discount. <laughs> <laughs> The price went up and that been second that much of a discount. Yes. yes. You think so? Yes. Second coach of the year award, put another yeah. zero on the end All of right, it. fair enough. You know, and, and this goes, and, and again, and the reason you want to see him sign a long extension is because it goes to something that I talk about all the time, guys, and that's you, you never know if a guy's a great coach, right? Like, and you didn't know Andy Reid was a great coach by year two or three. You certainly didn't know Belichick was a great coach right away. Right. The question is, do I have a good coach? Yes. Because if I have a good coach with enough time and consistency, there's a decent chance he'll become a great coach Absolutely. eventually. Yes. And so, you, yeah, you don't want to get stuck with a bad coach. And so, yeah. But once you know a guy is good, I don't care if you think he's the third best coach or the tenth best coach in the league. Is he good? Yes. Is there reason to believe that if I give him more time, he's going to get better? Yes. Absolutely. And that's why you lock him up. Because if you lock both guys up for a five years on top of what you got, well, now there's complete stability in the organization for a decade, which this franchise has never had. Not since or, you know, Yeah, not since it came back. Uh, yeah, and, long and, time. And how many times have we talked about it? You, Everybody makes mistakes when you're new at your job. Of course. When you're first yeah. learning your job. You, right. You have to have the opportunity to learn from those mistakes, to grow, to get better, and go, boy, I really messed that up. I learned from that. Whether it's GMs and drafting, whether it's head coaches and how they structure a practice or run a team, you have to give them a chance to learn from their mistakes. Yeah. That never happens in Cleveland. Everybody's fired in two or three years. That's right. And except for the Guardians, 
in all sports. Got yeah. most teams, they fire the coaches in two or three right. years. You know what's funny? You have to give them a chance to learn from it, and the Browns have found You know what's funny about that? I just thought about well, As you said that, I thought about the Browns draft the receivers in the third round. Do you know that they've taken three different type of receivers? They took a speed guy, a possession guy, and a big body. Oh, I'm guy. aware. They, but they like they keep trying to figure it out. Like yeah, they keep realizing. Right. At they least they're not making the same mistake. Oh, we didn't get the fast guy. We gonna go try to get another fast guy. We gonna try to go get another. Like yeah. at least they like trying to figure this well, wide receiver thing out. So you gotta give them credit for that. At least I, I go early. They're not making the same mistake. But they've gotten it wrong three times. Yes, in a row. At but least still, it seems that way. but still, I'm not giving up on Cedric Tillman yet. It's only one year. I thought he showed a little problem. I just, I think it's, it's fascinating. I just thought about it like at least they did draft three different types of wide receivers. <laughs> like they didn't go get the same type of receiver. Yeah, I, I, I think, I mean, and they know they really screwed up with Anthony Schwartz. They they know, they, oh, yeah. they know that. Oh, that, yeah. was, that was a huge blunder, but yeah. in the end, you know, what are you going to do?